Welcome back inside the UC Health Training Center for day eight of training camp practice. Hello, everyone. Thanks so much for tuning in to tonight's episode of Broncos Now. I'm your host, Sydney Jones, and the players were back in full pads today for just the second time this camp. And in my opinion, it was the most exciting practice so far this camp. Both sides of the ball were making up plays. The offense, they looked pretty explosive out there, and the defense had a couple nice takeaways. I thought we've gotten better every day. You know, I mean, yesterday we had the jog through, and to me, I, I, I'm shocked at how much we got done yesterday. I mean, we got way more plays than we had anticipated. The guys were able to mentally learn, get fresh, get their legs about them, so then we can come out here and have that high level of a practice. That's what you're looking for. You know, you never want to come out and waste a day in pads. They're so precious. We don't have a lot of those. Um, so you want to be sure you get everything the guys learn about themselves. And I mean, it's like the season. I mean, you don't go a lot of pads in a row during the season. So you want them to get used to that. So, um, I mean, it was, I thought it was a really good practice. I got to watch the tape. It's never as good as you think, never as bad as you think. Um, I'm happy to see both play, both sides of the ball making plays though. That's what you want. You want explosive plays and you want the, uh, the defense taking uh, the ball away, which is great about my position is I get to celebrate for all of it. So I don't have I don't need to get mad. And to end practice today, the Broncos first team offense had a phenomenal end of game to Minitrell. On fourth and four, Russell Wilson threw it down the left sideline to Cortland Sutton for about a 35 yard completion. Russell and company finished the drive with an 18 yard touchdown pass to Trey Quinn. Head coach Nathaniel Hackett was certainly impressed by the offense's performance today. Two minute is typically one of the hardest things to get going for a brand new offense. Just getting everybody on the same page because everything's happening so fast, trying to you know process situations, all those things. So to see that happen, you know, only on the second time that we've done it, first time at the end of game, um, was really great. I mean, uh, it was great working with Russ through that one and watching him. He called that last play, which was absolutely fantastic and hit it for the touchdown. So, you know, it's just one of those things. You just want to always see progressions. You know, you always want to see guys getting better uh, slowly but surely. And uh, that was good. We got a long way to go, but that was really nice to see. Like Coach Hackett mentioned earlier, the team was able to come out and practice harder today after having that jog through style practice yesterday. The slow tempo practices definitely give the players a body some rest, but there's no doubt that these full padded practices are needed. And both Javante Williams and Draymond Jones agree. Um, I like padded practices a whole lot better because on um, the old line I can get a hold of like the defense and then not just slipping off blocks, so it don't make you look like you're doing a long read. And it's, it's really like playing in the game because how fast we'll be going. So, so yeah, padded practices it really help with your eyes and just where you're gonna fit in the on squad. Padded practices give you a real feel for everything, so you know exactly you know. What you get out of yourself and out of your teammates, and uh, execution wise, execution wise, we do get a better feel with that. And the Broncos signed wide receiver Darius Shepard this morning to their 90-man roster. He was with Coach Hackett in Green Bay during the 2019 and 2020 seasons and played in 14 games there. He was out at practice today, and on day one, he was already making plays. He caught a 60-yard bomb from Josh Johnson for a touchdown. Take a listen to what both he and Hackett had to say about it. It's not a bad start, you know, to... Uh, get adjusted to being with the guys and you know see them see what you can do so it was cool to get in here and make a play on you know the first day I was with Shep at uh, Green Bay for two years and uh, you know he played a lot of football for us I mean he's a guy that you can depend on tough smart guy and uh, you know we're happy that he can come in here and help us out and you saw already he did some good stuff now it's time to take a more in-depth look at today's practice so joining me here in the podcast studio is Broncos lead writer Eric Talala Eric what, a, what an exciting day of practice today. It really was. I think the yeah. end of practice was probably the most exciting portion that we've seen Definitely. through this first week of camp. Yeah, I feel like certainly the best we've seen from the offense so far this camp. What do you think kind of clicked for them today? Yeah, I think maybe, you know, so what happened was it was a two-minute drill at the end of practice. They had about a minute and 40 seconds left to go 80 yards. They had to score a touchdown. They're down 14-10, and... When they did this a couple days ago, the offense couldn't even get a first down. And so you really wanted to just see progress from the offense. What you ended up seeing was on fourth and four, Russell Wilson throwing a 34-yard pass to Cortland Sutton, who made an incredible catch, his best catch of training camp so far. Mm -hmm. And then you saw Russell Wilson uh, call his own play and throw a touchdown there in the end zone to Trey Quinn. And I think what it really came down to on that is, when moments like that happen, that's when Russell Wilson's at his best. And I think you see kind of instincts take over. That's what you saw with Cortland there. That's what you saw with Russ back, dropping back to pass. And so I think it's a flash of what this offense can be. And I, I think what it really is is 
their knowledge of this system is catching up to their athleticism, their playmaking ability, and you saw it in that two-minute drive. Yeah, even Coach Hackett said after practice today that that you know end of game two minute drill was kind of a combination of being a scripted period, but also letting Russ you know read the defense, call the plays on his own. I feel like that goes to show kind of how much this offensive scheme is a little bit of a hybrid between Hackett and Russell. Do you like that? Yeah, absolutely. I think you have to, and I agree. Yeah. You're right. It is a hybrid between what Nathaniel Hackett wants to do and what Russell Wilson wants to do. But also, it's not just about the scheme. It's about when you're calling it in the game and Hackett essentially said, Russ gets a, a sense of here's some plays we might want to run. Nathaniel Hackett's still in his ear, but Russ goes to the line of scrimmage and looks and sees what's working, what doesn't work, what do I want to run here? And I think you have to empower your quarterback like that. Um, the guys that have been here in the past, maybe not as much, but with a guy like Russ, you're talking about the tiers of players like Mahomes and Justin Herbert and Aaron Rodgers, Tom Brady, those types of guys – they deserve to make those sort of play calls. They've done this long enough. They're good enough. They know what's going to work best. So I like that Nathaniel Hackett's empowering his players. And it was the best we've seen this offense, not just in that period, but earlier as well. You know, two new guys on the team out there today, wide receiver Darius Shepard and running back Max Borgie. Nice first day for Shepard out there. He had um, a nice touchdown. What do you like about these two additions to the team so far? And I know it's only day one, but. Right. I mean, Shepard has experience with Nathaniel Hackett because he was in Green Bay, of course, mm -hmm. for part of the last three years while Hackett was there as the offensive coordinator. So he knows the system, presumably, which is good. That's going to help get him up to speed. Um, and speaking of speed, we saw that he has that speed. He has that catchability. The Broncos are, are a little thin at wide receiver right now with all the injuries. Kendall Hinton out. Tyree Cleveland, it sounds like he's going to miss a good amount of time. Um, obviously, Tim Patrick done for the year. So just having a body there who has a little bit of NFL experience is great. As far as Max Borgie, or Borgie, I think, what the the uh, the thing for him is just going to be how do we take advantage of some of these reps? Because he's a guy that's coming in late in camp. Yeah. He's got to learn the playbook. Um, probably a guy that was going to compete for a practice squad spot anyway. Um, so I'm I'm kind of in wait and see mode on him. Obviously, he's a local kid, a great story, um, did some good things at Washington State, but he's going to have to come in and prove in these preseason games, hey, I'm, I'm worthy of a special team spot or I'm worthy of a practice squad spot. Um, it's kind of a wait and see approach with Max. Well, one guy we really haven't talked about much on this show yet is rookie cornerback Damari Mathis. He had an impressive diving interception today. What, do you, what did you see on that play, and how do you think he's done so far this camp? Yeah, great play by Damari. To, you know, a play like that, you can't just react. You've got to read what the quarterback's doing, read what the receiver's doing on his route. Uh, Damari was able to do that, work back to the ball, undercut. I think it was uh, 13 out there that he was working against, but showed the athleticism that you liked when he was coming out of Pittsburgh. And the question with him was not really, hey, is he athletic enough for the NFL? Is he a good enough football player? It was some of the penalty stuff, and he's right. he's really cleaned that up during training camp. And so that sort of disappeared, at least so far, as a question mark. We'll have to see what happens in the preseason. But he's got that athleticism. He's a guy that can play outside. Maybe he can play in the nickel as well if the Broncos need him. So he's definitely going to make this football team, and I think he's got a good chance if he plays well to, to not just be active on game day, but maybe challenge a guy like Michael Ojemudia for that fourth corner spot. Yeah. Well, last question for you, Eric, since we have so many highlights to choose from today, <laughs> what was your top play of the day? It's got to be that Cortland catch along the sideline there in the two-minute drill. Um, Cortland's had, you know, some good plays in camp, but he's also had his fair share of tough plays going against Pat Sertan. That is not an easy matchup. Oh, yeah. It's making him better, but Cortland Sutton is at his best when you can throw it deep, allow him to track the ball, go up and get it, because he's going to be bigger than every cornerback he goes against. And so that play in particular, um, to go up against Ronald Darby, go up and make that play along the sideline, keep your feet in, secure the ball. And it was a big moment. You know, it's just practice. But right. for it to be fourth and four and Russell Wilson to have kind of the the presence of mind and the, the trust in Cortland to go deep with that throw, I think that says a lot. And, and hey, it says a lot about Russell, too, that on fourth and four, he didn't just look for a check down. He was willing to go deep, trusted a guy like Cortland who made a, a make, made a great play. Okay, Lyde, I have one more question okay, for you then. Who would you say is the player of the day? Again, a lot of people to choose Ooh, from today. Yeah. Mm, Tough one. I'll stick with Cortland. He, okay. You know, not just that play, but he made another play earlier um, in practice when the offense was just getting going. Russell kind of rifled a pass in tight coverage, and Cortland was able to secure mm -hmm. it, uh, move the chains in that situation. 
they're just going to need a lot from Cortland Sutton, especially with Tim Patrick out. And so for him to respond like that in the first fully padded practice since Tim's injury, I thought that spoke volumes about what to expect from Cortland. Certainly does. Well, an exciting practice today. Hopefully another one tomorrow. Hopefully the offense just gets better and better each day. Eric, appreciate your time and your insight. Of course. An NFL Network national insider, Ian Rappaport, was at practice today. I had a chance to catch up with him and ask him his thoughts on this year's Broncos team. Take a listen. Ian, I know you're making your rounds to different training camps around the league. Today, obviously, you're here in Denver. What do you like about this Denver team now that expectations are really at an all-time high with Russell Wilson here? Yeah, and I think expectations should be where they are. I mean, you, know, you make a big trade for Russell Wilson, and basically what that does is put you in the mix. You know, it's not going to win games for you, but if you don't have a quarterback, you are most certainly not going to win games. So, you know, what the Denver Broncos did was they got themselves in the conversation. You know, it's up to them to do it. And I think, you know, having as good a defense as I think these guys will be really, really helps. I mean, the defense is feisty and going to be really good. Um, you know, that that will help. But there is a reason the expectations are what they are because they traded for a Super Bowl winning quarterback. And, you know, it sounds like he has been as advertised. And, you know, he'll play well, and that's great. But it sounds like he works in a way that will make others work as well. Uh, and all that is really, really helpful. Kind of going off of that, how good do you think this team can be this year? And do you feel like Russell might have something to prove this season? Uh, yeah, I think he probably would. You know, I know he wasn't thrilled with, with you know, what happened last year. I think by the, by the end in Seattle, it was time. I think all sides would probably agree. It was a good time to move on. Um, and it was a good time for him to kind of start his second act. You know, I mean, there's – he – he has a Super Bowl. He's been close. Um, obviously, dealt with the injury last year, which he hadn't hardly been injured. But last year was, I know, a difficult year. Um, I know he's looking forward to getting back to that like upper echelon of quarterbacks that he probably should be considered as. Um, and this is, you know, a really good opportunity to get there. Well, Russell, in this offense, you know, they're continuing to work on mastering Nathaniel Hackett's scheme here. How long do you think it might take them to to really gel as an offense? Yeah, I wouldn't be surprised if it takes him a little bit. You know, the season is long. I mean, we all think about it as short because it's just a couple months and, like, you know, you, you see the reaction after week one. Everybody loses their minds, whatever happens. It is a long season. You know, and that's one nice thing about having a defense that I think will be this good because even if it takes him a little bit to find themselves on offense, like, that's okay. They will be in games. They have an opportunity to win at the end and – I think Russell has showed over the years that at the end of the game with the game on the line, he is a good person to have the ball in his hands. Um, so I think they're going to be fine, but I could see it taking a little bit to have everyone kind of wrap their hands completely around this offense and scheme. Now it's time to take a look at today's injury update. A couple new guys on the list today, unfortunately. Caden Stearns did not practice as he had an injection in his hip they are hopeful he'll be back at practice on Saturday, though. Plus, Christopher Allen also did not practice today. They are slowly working him back in as he returns from that foot injury. So just being precautious with him there. DJ Jones, Kendall Hinton, Tom Compton, K1 Williams, and Tyree Cleveland were all not at practice again today. Coach Hackett said they wanted to rest DJ Jones and said they're playing Tyree Cleveland's throat injury by ear. They want to get him back as soon as they can, but also want to take it slow. Billy Turner and Randy Gregory still remain on the PUP list. That'll do it for today's episode of Broncos Now. Thank you all so much for tuning in for another day of training camp practice. Hope to see you all right back here on the Broncos Podcast Network and YouTube for another edition tomorrow evening and for day nine of practice. I will see you all then.